Welcome to the Pimp Your Brilliance podcast with Monique Malcolm, a show about leveraging your existing knowledge, unique skills, or passion to build a thriving creative business. I aim to show you what's really possible when you stop letting fear have all the fun and start taking action towards your goals. You can learn more about this show and subscribe for updates by visiting PimpYourBrilliance.com. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of Pimp Your Brilliance. I'm so glad that you're here. This is episode number 94, and you can find show notes at pimpyourbrilliance.com backslash 94. Before we get started with today's episode, I just wanted to remind you to take the digital product quiz. It's like one of those BuzzFeed quizzes where it tells you which friend's character you're most like or what your ideal dessert is. It's really cool. It's quick and it's short, but basically it's going to help you figure out what type of digital product you should create first. It's really easy. It's only like five or six questions. And once you're done, you'll get a list of my favorite product creation resources. So if you're curious about which digital product you'll be paired up with, you can take the quiz over at pimpyourbrilliance.com backslash quiz or open up the show notes on your phone or your podcast app and you can click the link for the quiz inside of there. All right. So now that we've gotten that out of the way, let's talk about today's episode. So recently, I've been talking a lot about systems and why creating them are an important part of your business. As I mentioned previously, I am a huge systems nerd. I'm always trying to streamline things, make things more efficient, reduce the steps that I have to take to get work done, and just overall do as little work as possible. It sounds lazy, but it's not. We wear a lot of hats as solopreneurs and digital business owners. There's just so much to do between content creation, lead generation, client work, product creation, posting to social media. There's just tons and tons of stuff to do. So today I want to talk a bit more about systems and share a personal story, um, my journey to creating systems for my business. So really quickly, a refresher. Systems. Systems are your specific way of completing tasks in your business. So when we talk about systems, we're talking about all of those things I just mentioned. Content creation, how we get new leads, how we service customers, all of that falls into systems. They are an essential but overlooked piece of the business pie. You need systems. And I know it's not the sexiest topic to talk about documenting your processes, creating operation manuals, but trust me, you need them. And when I share my story about how I hired my first VA, you'll you'll see even more. But the topic of today's episode is four systems mistakes that you don't want to make. And I'm going to be pointing out these four mistakes because I want to help you bypass all of those newbie pitfalls. I want to help you fast track implementing systems. And if you're someone who's already started creating systems for your business, but you're feeling disappointed that they aren't working, it's probably because you've committed one of these mistakes. And the first time that I attempted to systemize my business and hire help, it turned into a hot mess, such a hot, stressful mess. And looking back on that experience, I now realize that I made some variation of all four of these mistakes. And that's why my hiring experience was not great. And it made me feel Like one, I wasn't a good leader. I wasn't a good business owner because I was not having this blissful experience that all my friends said I was going to have by hiring help. I thought I was going to be able to take off some of these hats and offload them to somebody else. I'm buying back my time because I have my virtual assistant to do certain tasks in my business. When in reality, it was more stress than it was worth. And here's why. I'm going to tell you the story and then we'll go over the four mistakes. So let's backtrack a little bit. So this was probably 2015, I believe. I hired my first virtual assistant. She was great. She came recommended. She was uh, running behind the scenes of like some other businesses that I really admired. So I was like, great, I'm getting my first virtual assistant. I can finally afford to hire some help. And then it quickly fell apart. So I remember um, trying to set up at the time some kind of project management system. But at the time, I was still using a paper planner mainly. 
I wasn't that experienced in a project management system. I was creating content, but I was doing it kind of flying by the seat of my pants. I did not have a set routine for how often I need to get things out, how often I was creating it. And I did not have the steps broken down to how do I create a blog post? I just had this general idea of, okay, when I write a blog post, here's how it's formatted in WordPress. When I, when I create something like that, here's how I create this content and I just want you to schedule it. But there was no system behind, here's all the, the stuff that goes into creating images. Here's what goes into creating a post. Here's how it has to be formatted. Here's how it has to be shared. I had none of those things together. And do you know what happened? I end up parting ways with that virtual assistant probably two months into the process. And the entire two months, I was stressed. Let me tell you, I was so stressed. It was not the joyous experience that I thought it was going to be. I really thought I was going to be able to sit back a little bit, breathe a little bit easier because I had someone to offload some of this content creation work to, but that's not what happened because I didn't have any systems. I didn't have a standardized way of putting together blog posts. I didn't have an operations manual that would tell my assistant how I stored new blog post files, how to create new images. I basically was creating all this content and then handing it to her to schedule without any real guidelines. So this became a problem because I would have something ready to go and then she would have to come back and ask me, what are the next steps? What are the next steps? What are the next steps? And that's not efficient. It's not relaxing either because imagine you're in the middle of some other work and you have your assistant that's like, hey, I'm ready to do the blog post thing. Where is it? And now I have to go find it and give it to her or great, I've done the blog post for you. What do you want me to do next? I don't know, because I'm not clear on exactly what task help move my business forward. So that experience, it was just not great. It was not what I thought it was going to be. And it really made me feel insecure as if I'm not a good business owner. When in reality, it's just I wasn't experienced. And nobody told me that I need to have systems in place No one helped me see the benefit of having some type of a training hub or an operations manual. So I end up having to part ways with this VA. I took on another VA probably a year after that. And that experience went a little bit better. So at that point, I realized, okay, I need to have some processes documented. So I started getting those documented. And I did create myself a little video training library. So I just simply recorded some short videos that showed how I format blog posts, where I store files, and I shared that with my new virtual assistant. And this one worked out a little bit longer than the first one, maybe a few months longer than the first one. But again, it was still a very stressful situation. It wasn't as fluid as I needed it to be because I did not have a real good handle on systems. However, this time I had a better handle on project management systems. So it went better, but it still wasn't great. It still wasn't that hands-off feeling to get blog posts done. It wasn't until I started podcasting that I really got a handle on systems. One, how to use a project management system to project manage a podcast because there's a lot of work that goes into the back end of podcasting. It's nothing like blogging. It's a lot more in-depth. But then I took the time to actually document what does it take to create a podcast from coming up with topics for the show and writing out points and a script for myself to editing the show or no, actually to recording the show. I taught myself to edit. So I would edit the shows, creating all the images getting it on WordPress and ready to go, getting it out to Libsyn so that it would go out to all the podcast catchers. And then even what it took to share the show around to help get one new guest and then just to get new listeners. 
And it was like, once I got all of that stuff together, I started to realize like, oh, I can see how I have been the roadblock in this before. And having that system together, like really sitting down and thinking, what are the overarching pieces of putting together a podcast? One, researching and developing an episode, recording, editing, creating images, getting a post schedule, and then sharing. So that's six things. And then for each of those six steps, there's even more in-depth steps that go into each one of those things. But taking the time to get all of that documented and written down and really think, where can I use someone to help me with this? And that's when I realized that, oh, maybe I don't have to be the person that creates images. So by systemizing the podcast, set up the podcast publishing process, I realized like, oh, if I get templates, I can have my virtual assistant do images for me. I don't actually have to do the image creation anymore. And boom, I shaved 20 minutes off of the work that I need to do for the podcast. By getting all those systems together, I realized, hey, I can outsource the editing to someone else and it still be seamless. So I was able to hire a podcast editor and really all her job was she was in the project management system. And once I got the show edited, or not edited, I'm sorry, once I got the show done, I would upload it to a certain file. I would tag her in the project management system and she would turn around a new show. And then from there, she would tag me and let me know she was done. And I would tag the virtual assistant to do all the other admin pieces of podcasting. So at this point, I don't really have to do all that much for the podcast beyond research my topics, write my script and record the show. The editing is handed off to someone else. The admin is handed off to someone else. And I'm free to go work on other parts of my business. And it's so much better. It's so, so much better. But as I said, thinking back from where I started with my first virtual assistant to being able to manage an editor and a virtual assistant, it's a dramatically different experience. And I realized that the mistakes lie in not having a system. And this is why I have been really pushing for this. Even if you feel like you're not ready to hire a team or contractors, it's still important that you prepare yourself for the future if you want to scale. And one of the ways to do that is making sure that you don't make these very simple mistakes because some of them seem really obvious. And once I share them with you, you'll see. But Now that I've told you that story about my struggles with hiring and and how it was not the experience I wanted, you'll be able to really see those mistakes, like how I made these same four mistakes. So four mistakes that you don't want to make with your systems. Mistake number one, neglecting having systems all together. So that was my experience with VA number one. I didn't have any systems. It doesn't matter if you're a solopreneur or if you're a team of 100. Your business needs systems, even in stage one. Systems set a solid foundation from the beginning. And by building out your systems consistently, you're just giving yourself and your business a more stable foundation to start on. And you don't have to have everything mapped out. If you go back to episode, what is it, 92? I talk about how to prepare your business for systems. I walk you through what to think about when you are trying to decide what systems you need for your business. I also gave you a really simple process for documenting those steps. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. It can be a basic Google Doc. But as your business grows and evolves, you're going to want to update your systems. And that's just logical. Your business is going to be different a year in, two years in than when it was when you started. This is an ongoing process. It's not a one-time set it and forget deal. You're always updating your systems, but you have to stop burying your head in the sand and neglecting your systems because if you do that, you're going to stifle your business's growth. Mistake number two, setting up the wrong systems. And guilty, I'm so guilty, If you think about it, how many times have you heard about a system someone else uses in their business and they got great results and you thought, wow, I want to do the same thing and you just blindly copied it? Probably a handful of times 
We've all done it. I've done it. I've probably suggested something to you that you've given a try and it didn't work. In the early stages of your business, it's really easy to make this mistake because you're still figuring out what works. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's completely fine to be a beginner. There's a lot of trial and error here. But one thing I want you to remember, even when I make suggestions for you, every business is different. So your systems are going to be influenced by the type of business you have and your business model. So that means the systems that work for someone else, the systems that work for me, they might not work for you. A product-based business does not have the same systems needs as a service-based business. I know this. I run an e-commerce store over at keepchasingthestars.com. So some of the needs I have system-wise for Keep Chasing the Stars, they're not the same needs I have for Pimp Your Brilliance and vice versa. So if you don't take the time to evaluate your business needs, you can end up with a bunch of systems that don't serve you or build the business that you'd like to build. And there's nothing wrong with using someone else's systems as a starting point, but you have to make sure that you tweak it to fix your business. So I'm still going to share systems ideas. I'm still going to share tools. I'm still going to give suggestions, but it's your job to take those things and apply them to your specific business for your specific needs. Don't just follow them blindly. Mistake number three, putting tools before the system. Now, I love tinkering with new tools and new software as much as the next person. And let me tell you, that shiny object syndrome is so real. But you need to have your systems in place first. If you think about it like this, the best example I can give is like thinking about a piece of IKEA furniture. Everybody knows IKEA furniture is notorious for having tons of steps and directions. But if you want to do it the easy way, if you want to do it the stress-free way, you start on step one and you follow the direction to the end. That's how you handle IKEA furniture. Now, you could start on step five and maybe you're going to have some success for a few steps but you're going to notice very quickly the pieces don't quite line up the way that you need them. So that's why you don't skip steps. You have to write out the processes. And then once you're done, it's easier to see how and where a tool can complement your system. And I think that's where people miss out a lot. They go straight to the tools. They go straight to, I want something to automatically schedule my Instagram, or I want something that's going to automatically tweet out my blog post. And that's great. But before you try to automate, you have to think about what do you actually need as a complementary piece to this system? What are the steps in your process? What, what needs to be done? What's going to help out the most here? Because a lot of times I bet you'll realize by skipping the systems piece, you may be wasting money. You may be wasting your most valuable resource, time. There's probably better ways to streamline and automate stuff if you just take the the time to document the process. Because once you have all the steps laid out, once you know clearly what's going to take you from start to finish, then you can go in there and see where you can offload things or where a tool makes the most sense to handle a part of the process or where you can automate. But you can't really get a good, clear picture of that before the system is created. So that's why you do the system first, tools afterwards. Remember, tools are a complement to the thing. It's, it's like the side dishes. It's not the main course. And then finally, mistake number four is not following the system. And this is the most common mistake, but it's also the easiest one to fix. You spent the time documenting the system and building it out as a project in your project management system, but now you are just refusing to use it when going through the process. So what was the point? The point is not using your system is leading to outdated systems. And this becomes a classic case of if you don't use it, you lose it. So if you created this beautiful system for how you handle podcast publishing, but once it's time for you to actually publish your podcast, You never open up your project manager or your checklist and actually create the systems in the the way that you documented it, that system becomes outdated. What if you do that today, 
but six months from now you hire someone. When you hire that person now, before they can start, you have to go back through and update all those systems. When you could have been doing that in the process of just using your system on a weekly basis, that's enough to keep it updated. Because if you're going through it, every time you do a podcast episode, you're able to see if there's places where there's gaps now, there are steps that you need to consolidate, or maybe there's new steps that's added. But again, your systems are not a static document. They're dynamic. They change and they evolve. And one way of staying on top of that is just making sure you follow your own system. And then another part of this is it's just good practice. If you're going to grow a business, if you're going to scale your business, you have to be using systems. It's not enough just to document them and then walk away and leave them to rot and waste and become outdated. This has to be something that you are making a conscious effort of doing and not just relying on, well, I remember all the steps. Well, that's great. Still, you need to get in the habit of using your systems, using your your tools that you have to complement your system. So if you have a project management system, running through that process every single time you do the podcast and making it a habit. That's one thing that I I get a lot of questions about. It's like, how do you make yourself use the project management system? You commit to doing it. Once you spend all that time setting it up and creating your boards and making it in a way that works for you, that makes sense for your brain, then you commit to using it. You commit to updating it every week. You commit to going in there every day and making sure that you checked out the tasks that you assigned to yourself. You just make this a part of your routine. And it's the same thing with your systems. You follow your systems. You make them a part of what you do every week to run your business, to grow your business, to scale your business. And you just rinse and repeat over and over again. So to quickly recap, the four mistakes that you don't want to be making in your creative business. One, neglecting your systems altogether. Two, setting up the wrong systems. Three, putting tools before the system. And then four, not following the system that you created. So listen, I'm going to keep on the system soapbox simply because I really do want you to find a bit more flow and ease in your business. And it feels like a lot of upfront work and it feels very rigid. But one thing I can tell you as a Sagittarius, and I don't know if you know anything about Sagittarian people or if you are really into astrology but we are considered fire signs. We are noted for our wanderlust and we don't like to be confined. And I know one thing in myself, I don't, in my mind, I like to be a rebel. I don't want too much rigid structure or too many plans in my mind. However, I live my life so much better and at so much more ease and I sleep so much better When I have a plan, it's crazy. It's really not that crazy. It's logical. When you have a plan, you know what happens next. You know what to do next. You know where to go next. And you just breathe and live easier because you know what comes next. But when I try to resist the urge to to plan and have structure, things just fall apart. And I feel like that's the same thing that happens in your business when you don't have systems or structure. Things just fall apart. You don't grow as fast as you can. It doesn't feel as easy. And that's not to say that business is just super easy and without challenges. There are challenges. But at the same time, so much of this can be simple and so much of this can be in flow when we take the time to structure our businesses right, when we take the time to systemize our businesses and let the system do some of the heavy lifting. When you have systems in place, you can find the tools that can do some of the work that you don't want to do. There's a lot of admin, like data entry work that I have systems that handle it. And I just go in there once a week and just make sure the system worked and just make sure things matched up to where they're supposed to. I don't actually have to do the data entry. And that's because I have systems in place. And that's what I want for you. I want you to have that same sense of ease And same sense of, we got this, even though we're wearing all the hats, because I'm still wearing a ton of hats. Even when I hire help, 
I'm still wearing a lot of hats. And so I do want to help you get to that place where you can hire or you can afford to pay for tools that do some of this work for you. So that was this week's episode. As always, I would love to have your feedback. If you are on an iPhone or an iPad, something related to Apple, if you open up the podcasting app and you look at Pimp Your Brilliance in your app and you scroll all the way down to the bottom, you'll see a place where you can leave reviews. Please leave me a review. If you're in some type of other podcasting app, Stitcher, there's lots of them over cast box, you know, some of those. If you can leave reviews there too, I would love to have them. Also, you can send your questions. If you have a question, pimpyourbrilliance.com backslash ask. And I am crowdsourcing questions. Episode 100 is going to be in just a few weeks. And I would love that to be a listener Q&A episode. So if you have questions, pimpyourbrilliance.com backslash ask is where you can submit them. I would love to have you do that. You can do it text. If you're feeling super ambitious, if you create a voice note on your phone and you send me the file via email, I'll send you, give you the email in a moment, send it to me via email, I'll play your audio on the episode of you asking the question. So that's an option as well. If you want to email me, hello at pimpyourbrilliance.com. And as always, you can find me on Instagram at pimpyourbrilliance or over on Twitter at Star Chasers only. So those are all the ways that you can get in touch. I really would love to have your questions for episode number 100. So please submit them. Don't be shy. You can ask me anything about business, digital products, planners, systems. Really ask away and I'm going to find an answer for you. But that is all I have for this week's episode. Until next time, go out there and pimp your brilliance. Uh-huh.